This is a Draven one trick, and this is me. So for the next 10 hours, I'm gonna learn Draven in three steps. First, play normal games, second, do some research, and third, finally, play some ranked games. I'm doing this because I'm trying to learn every champion in the game so one day I can make the greatest Viego video ever. And spoiler alert, the difference between hour one and hour 10 this challenge was insane. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, what runes and items should I go? For runes, you can either go Lethal Tempo or Hail of Blades. Lethal Tempo is better in the mid game and during longer fights, while Hail of Blades is better early game for super strong traits in lane. I personally liked Lethal Tempo a lot more because Hail of Blades felt pretty weak in the mid and late game. For your build, you have two main options. You have a lethality build that plays more like an assassin than an AD carry. It was decent, it just did not fit my playstyle. The other build is a more traditional crit build, which I liked a lot more. I had a little bit less mobility, but I did way more damage. Oh yeah, and let's not talk about my build during the normal games. I found a build online that I thought looked pretty good. It was not. Anyway, game one started off freaking amazing. Minus me dropping axes constantly. And even though I completely forgot to press my W during this fight, I immediately started this game off with a double kill. I was saving my W for when I needed a speed boost, but just completely forgot that it resets when I catch an axe. Oh my gosh, I'm the best Draven player that has ever played this game. And the game only got better from there. No, we're going. Oh my God, wait, this champion's not balanced. I really started to feel like a Draven player when I ran at the enemy 1v2 like an idiot and still managed to get a kill because my Soraka came and saved me. I got so strong this game, I thought that I could just split push and win the game on my own, but that turned out to be a bit of a mistake. But alas, a mix of not knowing how to play the champion and the fact that Master Yi could just melt me led to us losing the game. Despite the defeat, I was pretty happy with my first game on Draven and I continued that momentum into my next game as well after a big level one team fight. But there was honestly not much that happened this game. Eventually I got my first kill, but at this point the game was already 12 to one and I was still struggling to catch my axes. The enemy team ended up surrendering just a few minutes later. And after a couple of pretty decent games, it made sense that I had my first really bad game. Even though my laning phase was fine, I played too aggressively in forced fights I probably just should not have forced. I also got caught out on my own like a complete idiot and team fights didn't really go well either. It's just so hard to catch my axes while also trying to dodge skill shots. I'm starting to think maybe I shouldn't try to catch every single axe. Yeah, and my next game was even worse than the last one. In my defense, this game, my support bard spent most of the game roaming, so I was just kind of left to fend for myself down here. But I just had a lot of issues this game from a bad laning phase to bad positioning in fights, which all just started to get me a little bit tilted. Like, honestly, what the fuck am I supposed to do here anyway? In the end, we lost the game and I realized I kind of suck at Draven. So after my normal games, I decided to do some research on YouTube and here's what I found. One, you need to play super aggressive early game. I knew Draven falls off, but I didn't realize how hard he falls off. So you have to try to win the game early. Two, lead your axes to where you want to go. Draven's axes go to where you right click after you throw them. So if you want to chase your opponent, you have to click forward. If you click backwards or to the side, you won't catch your axes or you'll lose a ton of damage while you're chasing. Three, but don't try to catch every axe because you could get hit by skill shots or put yourself in a bad position. In one of the guides I read, it said a good Draven can catch every axe, but a great Draven knows when to catch his axe. Four, trading one for one is worth if you get the kill first. So if you know you can get a kill by diving the enemy, go for it. Not only will you deny them CS, but you'll also get some extra gold from your passive, which will put you even further ahead of your opponent. And five, group early. Like I said, you fall off super hard late game. So if you do get a lead, you need to group with your team and win fights as quickly as possible. And with that, on to some ranked games. And I'm not gonna lie, my first game started off pretty well. I definitely learned a lot during my research portion. And like I said, trading one for one if I get the kill first is still pretty worth. Unfortunately, as the game went on, I started to struggle and the enemy team just started to scale. I think this game was a mix of things. I was trying new runes, a new build, which I didn't like. And since I was against players in ranked, they were a little bit better than the players I was playing against before. And like I said earlier, even though my first games were a little rough, let me tell you, by the end of this challenge, I looked like a completely different player. But for now, I sucked. 
Even though I didn't like the lethality build last game, I decided to give it another try because that game was just a complete disaster, and yeah, this game went a lot better. This game I did do well, but the rest of my team was kind of smurfing, so I didn't have to like hard carry or anything. I mean, I played smart and didn't die much, but I wasn't able to really test this build yet. And it was around this time when I started getting comfortable playing aggressive in lane. Even though this fight was close, I got the kill first and I was able to cash in on all my stacks. And that early kill was all I needed to dominate my lane for the rest of the game. Even though I was doing well, I still didn't feel comfortable with this lethality build. But I was winning, so I wasn't gonna give it up just yet. I mean, who am I to question this amount of damage, am I right? Needless to say, we won this game. But it was around this time that I started playing really bad. I was dying to absolutely everything, and since I didn't smash my lane in the first few minutes like the other games, I was starting to feel really weak with this lethality build. Lucky for me, my team was super good, and this game, I didn't actually look that bad, but Let's be honest, this game was not pretty. So far during these games, I felt like I've deserved the win or loss that I got, but this was the first game where I just don't think I deserved to win. And despite having a rough game last game, my laning phases were still pretty solid. But things started to go downhill when the enemy Yasuo stole Dragon and we ended up losing the fight right after. After that, it just felt like there was nothing I could do during fights with Malphite and Yasuo just jumping on top of me. So I built Edge of Night to dodge Malphite's ult and I was able to play the game a little bit. But when the enemy team has a Kane, Malphite, and Gragas that can all knock me up for Yasuo, Edge of Night was just not enough. Yeah, in the end, the enemy team had a better comp and they just outscaled us, so we got destroyed in that final fight and lost the game. And my next game started off great with my support Maokai flashing Master Yi into me and getting me killed. But I didn't let that tilt me and I actually managed to start winning lane pretty hard. My Maokai was not afraid to start fights and I was not afraid to follow up. Something about having a super confident support just gave me the confidence to go in, you know? But this game ended up being a bit of a team diff losing 13 to 33. The losing streak continued in my next game, but I forgot to press the record button. As you can tell by the score though, this game did not go very well at all. That's four games in a row now where I either lost or deserved to lose. So I went into my next game determined to win, but it did not start off very well. But after that death, something inside me changed, and it was the start of one of the best runs I've ever had during one of these challenges. It definitely helped that starting with this game, I finally changed my build and runes to better fit my playstyle, rather than just picking the highest win rate Draven build. I could feel the League of Draven coursing through my veins as I started to do more damage in fights than I had ever done before definitely helped that my team saved me from the Talon. Seriously, I don't know why I didn't build the Collector sooner. It's so much damage and its passive works so perfectly with Draven's passive. I think this is gonna be the start of a beautiful friendship. My next game started off a little bit aggressive. No, fuck, I didn't get the stacks, Oh, But the lane was over after my Wukong came to gank. My first axe bounced the wrong way, which was kind of annoying, but other than that, the fight went very well. And things got even better after Lux landed an amazing Q, which immediately led to us killing Caitlyn. And then we killed her again and again. Sorry, Caitlyn. I mean, holy shit, this champion is not fair if you get ahead early. I straight up fought the enemy team 1v3 and there was nothing they could do about it. After that, the enemy team typed GG and they immediately surrendered. Seriously, this champion is not okay early game. I don't know why it took me so long to embrace Draven's early game, but god damn, this, this Jin just can't play the game. I mean, actually, what the f fuck is this? Even though the game was kind of close with a score of 23 to 17, if I showed up to a fight, there was no way we were gonna lose. Jax was a little bit scary, I'll admit, but even he wasn't enough to kill me this game. Yeah, needless to say, we, we won this game. And it did look like my win streak was gonna end when my Nami just walked up and died for no reason. But a little later, I barely won a 1v1 against Caitlyn, which put me back in the game. Even though this game wasn't particularly impressive, I did get my first random ult kill of the 10 hour challenge, which was pretty nice. Oh, I got a kill? And even though I wasn't giga fed or anything this game, I was still doing insane damage. And again, there just wasn't anything the enemy team could do. And with that, I managed to win another game. And once again, my next game started started off a little bit too aggressive. And even though the first fight was kind of rough, I remembered, wait a minute, I'm Draven and just casually 1v2'd the enemy bot lane. Seriously though, this champion is not fair. Oh 
Oh my god, he's just dead! I would also like to think that I was actually starting to play Draven mechanically pretty well at this point too. And just like that, the enemy team surrendered again. And I think you can probably guess what happened in my last game's early game. Welcome to the League of Draven, bitches! To be honest though, of all of the last five games, this one was probably the most difficult for a while. But just like with my other games, I turned into a machine in teamfights. Playing aggressively, doing tons of damage while staying far enough away so the enemy team couldn't kill me. I turned a bad fight where two of my teammates got caught out into a winning fight somehow. I will admit, there were definitely still times I would overheat and die. Like I was doing so much damage, all I could think was, I'm gonna kill them all just to flash in and die. But anyway, it all came down to the final fight of the final game until Nami and I got caught out in the bot lane. Oh, wait, I just kind of one shot all of them? Yeah, never mind, we're good. So yeah, to end this challenge, I won six games in a row and it felt fucking amazing.